I'm Nat, and I'm the head of community at Exceptional Individuals. We support neurodiverse individuals, you know, dyslexia, dyspraxia, autism, ADHD, dyscalculia, synesthesia, Tourette's OCD, anything which comes under the term neurodiverse. And this is why I wanted to do this session, because we often talk about neurodiversity, but what exactly is it? And when we look at role models, it could mean so many things. So today is going to be looking at some of the classic examples of people who are always referred to as being, you know, our neurodivergent role models and superheroes. Are they? Or are they just like one person said it one time and everyone keeps copying and pasting? Which, to be honest with you, is the case for some of these. And I'm also going to be talking about some people that you may have never heard of. I would love to know what some of your thoughts, but... If you look at like the classics, like neurodiversity champions, they're always white and male. Like you've always got your Walt Disney's, you've always got your uh, John Lennon's, you know, uh, who else? Steve Jobs. And you don't often see any colour in that mix and not much gender diversity. So this is something I want to explore a little bit deeper. Because I am by all means, I love the more role models we have, the more successful people, the better. But if they're not neurodivergent and we're just calling them that, it kind of undermines it for the rest of us. So I've done a lot of research, a lot of digging to hopefully find the most accurate sources I can possibly find. April says, I've heard of synesthesia. I learned about it when I was studying it for my animation MA. Yes, we are going to be doing a session on that. That's uh, like having a really strong connection with sound and music and some people can like see colors and like taste letters is really interesting but very unique now i like to give a bit of a definition when when i'm talking about is someone neurodivergent or not because who is it for us to really say obviously we can talk about diagnosis and i am going to be relying on that a lot today otherwise kind of the entire world is and that's going to make it a bit harder to really home in on who is neurodivergent and who is not. But exceptional individuals, we judge it by the fluctuation of ability. So as you can see here, say if you're like amazing at maths, like maybe beyond all your peers, but you might really struggle in creativity and thinking outside of the box, or an excellent decision maker, but cannot communicate to save your life. It's those fluctuations which we see as being neurodivergent. Now, it's important to realise that those spikes can be anything. So for me, I'm terrible at maths, but I am very creative. What you thrive in could vary dramatically. And also, you may not even know what you're thriving in yet, because it's a bit of a journey and, you know, it takes time. And someone who is neurotypical is someone who has less of those highs and they, they're low. Obviously, it's a spectrum. We all have ups and downs and goods and strengths. But with neurodivergent individuals, it tends to be a little bit more noticeable. These are just some of the conditions which normally come under the umbrella of being neurodivergent. You've got dyslexia, which is about reading, dyscalculia, numbers, ADHD can relate to attention, autism, like seeing the world in a different perspective, Dysgraphia can be around coordination. Frontal alcohol spectrum disorder isn't one that we specialise in because we mainly focus around ones that you are inherently born with. Epilepsy, intelligent disabilities, yes they do come under it, but when we talk about it we're normally talking about ones which do not have an impact on intelligence. And also Tourette's and tic disorders. So someone who thinks differently from the way of the majority that's the most basic definition you can get. If you were to look at the majority of the population and you do not fall in that box, most likely neurodivergent. And this is why when we look at celebrities and case examples, so many people that we know and love come under it because they have been different from the status quo. Though we're not going to focus on that too much today and we're going to more focus on the ones that we know to be neurodiverse, definitely rather than ones that we suspect because as we'll go on today we'll realize that maybe we might be doing more damage than we think we are by making everyone part of our fan group so i want to know first of all see if there's any that i've missed coming up do 
Do you know any celebrities that are guaranteed to be diagnosed as neurodivergent? So anyone who is diagnosed with, say, autism or dyslexia or ADHD or dyspraxia? Because I'm sure we can think of so many people. Oh, yeah, wasn't Einstein dyslexic? But can we prove it? And normally when we're looking for proof, I go from a first-hand perspective. So say if, I don't know, say if Bill Gates had said in an interview, yes, I am diagnosed with dyslexia, I would take him at his word. I'm not here to, you know, dig through their personal files, but I wouldn't, for instance, say, oh, Leonardo da Vinci is dyslexic, because I cannot possibly prove that. So we've got Billy Eilish, yes, who has, is. Chris Peckham, yes, that's confirmed. Susan Boyle, Richard Branston, Whoopi Goldberg, Daniel Radcliffe, they all are. Emma Watson, I'm not, is it, does Emma Watson have an official diagnosis? I know she has mentioned it. Joe Swash. Oh, yeah. I like that. A very niche one. Wasn't he the king of the jungle for a bit? Anya has says, I recently noticed a lot of symptoms in Barbara Stark Streisand. Interesting. Well, that's another thing we are going to go into a little bit more is that, you know, if you look deep enough, you'll find these characteristics in everyone. If any of you go on the Exceptional Individuals website, we have lots of characteristic quizzes, which, you know, I made. They are good to a certain extent, but you've got to be careful because essentially if any of us go on Google and type in our symptoms, like, oh, got a bit of a cough, got a bit of a backache, you're dead. You know, the Internet will make you seem everything really extreme. So if you say, oh, I'm a little bit antisocial, I'm not great at making eye contact, automatically you're autistic. No. That is not the case. So we're going to have a quick deep dive into people who are rumoured rumored to be neurodiverse, ones who are self-diagnosed, which is a thing we are going to be talking about. Because at Exceptional Individuals, we work a lot with people who are self-diagnosed. And that's not just someone who just wants to have every condition under the sun. It's normally due to the fact that getting a diagnosis around the world can be really difficult. It can be expensive and also there may not be the professionals around. But ultimately, if we are using someone as the poster child to say, hey, why don't we be more like Steve Jobs? Do we really want to go with someone self-diagnosed? I'm not saying there's a right or wrong answer, but it's definitely something we should talk about. And lastly, diagnosed, which is the safest bet. I would say, though, if you're an individual who may or may not be neurodiverse, but you suspect it, then we will still absolutely help you. You do not need a diagnosis to work with exceptional individuals. I just think it's quite useful when we're using well-known individuals as examples to have some proof to back it up. So let's go on. Let's start off with a few actors first. So Keir Gilchrist, hopefully I pronounced his name okay, Autistic. So if any of you have seen Atypical, the show on Netflix, is the actor who plays Saint Sam Gardner on the Netflix series Atypical, is he autistic? Yes, diagnosed, rumoured or not? And this is an important one because a lot of the time people watch the media and they will automatically like assume, OK, well, if this show is about an autistic person, this will be your role model now on. That's going to be the person you always refer to. It's like Rayman, great movie, but Dustin Hoffman was not autistic. And people kind of now associate him with the, the image of autism. Now, a little, okay, diagnosed, no, he is not diagnosed, I can confirm. Rumoured, a little bit, but not mostly, but officially, no. He is not autistic. He did lots of research for the role. And I think he has made a very conscious effort to be as realistic as possible, but he is not. And there's also like the movie, was it music or song by Cyan? April, you know, is it? Is it music? Or... That one was heavily criticised because the main actor was not autistic and it was about autism. However, the person, the director or the producer argued that someone with autism just wouldn't be able to do that particular type of role. And that was very controversial. Um, in this case, I don't know. I think it depends whether you think that's OK that a non-autistic actor played an autistic character. But there we are. 
Next one is the Ghostbusters. Who are you going to call? Which Ghostbuster is officially diagnosed with autism, ASD? Is it Bill Murray? Is it Dan Aykroyd? Harold Ramis? Or Ernie Hudson? Oh, you can see I really struggle with the pronunciations of, like, everything. But you, you get the gist. Yes, thank you. April says it was music directed by Sia. Sounds like Sia. Oh, music. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the, uh, that was really helpful, actually. Yeah, that one had a, was very problematic. So, 100% of you got this right, which I'm actually pretty impressed. It is Dan. So, what may, is really interesting about this one is Dan wasn't only the actor, but he was also the one of the writers of the movie. He actually co-wrote Ghostbusters. And he said he had an obsession with ghosts when he was a child and it helped him to write Ghostbusters. And it wasn't until he was diagnosed that he figured out that that obsession was part of it. And that's something you will notice. Autism and obsession do go hand in hand. It's why people become like experts in one particular field, typically. Not always, but I know for me, you know, I went through phases of knowing all the dinosaurs. I knew all the Pokemon off by heart. Um... There's always something which I get hyper focused on and I'll be an absolute expert for like a number of years and then my brain may change focus. So a very typical characteristic and it was nice that he was officially diagnosed. A lot of these celebrities that we're going to be talking about were diagnosed in later life. That is something which you'll notice is quite common. However, do take it in mind that these people have a lot more money than most of us. So getting a diagnosis isn't as difficult as it may be for the every Joe. A few other notable examples is Wentworth Miller. So if you know that uh, overly attractive man on prison break, he has officially been diagnosed with autism. Then you've got Billy West. Billy West is known for voicing characters on Futurama like Fry. He's also, well, he, he's actually voiced lots of characters on a lot of the like Simpson shows, loads. I, I can't name them all now, but What's the new one by Matt Groening that's on Netflix? Yeah, I know April knows. One sec. Overly attractive, yes. <laughs> uh, I mean, you can't argue. And then we've got Bob Hopkins. So if any of you watched like Who Framed Roger Rabbit, he um, said, I came into this business uneducated, dyslexic, five foot six inches cubic with a face like a squash cabbage. That's a quote from an act from a from a movie, but he actually is dyslexic. Dischantment, but I haven't watched it. Thank you, April. Yes. Disenchantment, uh, Billy West is a little uh, spirit creature thing. Artists and animators. You'll notice that a lot of people who are neurodivergent, particularly those who are dyslexic and autistic, tend to gravitate towards very creative positions. Uh, that's not to say that all of us are going to be a creative animator or artist, but there is a link between storytelling, imagination, being able to see something and translate it in a different way. And one of the most notable examples is the legend that is Walt Disney. Now he is often cited as being dyslexic, but is he dyslexic? Yes, was he diagnosed? Was he self-diagnosed? Or no, no evidence. I'm curious to know what your thoughts are, and then I'll give you the correct answer. And as always, I've done as much research as one can possibly do, but if you think I'm wrong at all, call me out on it and I'll happily dig deeper. But I'm confident to say I've looked at numerous sources for each one of these. So at the moment, we've got a very wide selective. Now, Walt Disney is often cited as dyslexic because of the way he thinks. And even at exceptional individuals, when we first started, we often referred to Walt Disney because of the way that he saw the world and the way he negotiated. However, when you do digging, there is no evidence to suggest that Walt Disney was dyslexic. So we should probably stop using him. A direct quote from Dave Smith, who is the director of the Walt Disney Archive. So this guy, he knows his shiz. You know, he knows everything that you would want to know. There is no indication anywhere in Walt Disney's history that he ever had dyslexia, either in his childhood or during his business career. And obviously we all know dyslexia is lifelong, but I think what he meant here is, you know, 
was there more characteristics when he was younger that he was able to like overcome or find coping mechanisms there was not he was a very talented man and dave goes on to say you know he love he has no issue with those who are dyslexic you know he would love walt disney to be part of that community but there's something a little bit unethical about allowing someone to be seen and heard as part of a community who never was because it just i don't know it it doesn't sit right you know when you can suspect someone maybe but if you have kind of more further evidence that kind of hints towards no i mean again we can't say for certain but i would say it's probably safe to say using walt disney as an example of a neurodiverse individual probably is not the best idea there's other people who are diagnosed who we do have proof who are just as amazing as mr walt next on comedians comedians by definition tend to be hilarious and there are so many neurodiverse people when we think of like dyspraxia we think of maybe there's like a slight delay and things can come out a bit slower but that doesn't stop some of the amazing comedians out there and what I like is they do not lean on ripping on themselves. They are funny in their own right. And a lot of the time you wouldn't even know if they were neurodivergent. A great example that comes to mind is Jerry Sen uh, Senfield. You know, from the TV show Senfield. Do you think he is diagnosed, self-diagnosed, or not autistic at all? And you may not heard of this one before. I know it's more American, but if you're in the UK, you probably at least have heard of the show. But he's, as well as an actor, he's also a comedian and a producer. So all at the moment, we've got a nice broad range. We've got uh, people thinking all over the place. Okay, now are we ready for the answer? Hold on tight. He is self-diagnosed catch also it's a no so he went on a show and it was an interview with nbc news and they asked him if he you know was on the spectrum and he says uh yeah i think i'm on the spectrum you he says you're never paying attention to the right things basic social engagements is a real struggle and he kind of states his case and this is when there was a massive backlash everyone was like whoa 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 just because you can't make eye contact, just because you're a bit, you know, in their words, scatty or something, does not make you autistic. Yes, it's okay to say I resonate with some things, but I think the backlash was because the characteristics that he applied to himself weren't the definition of autism. He took a very shallow, a very top level understanding of ASD, and then he attached himself to it and it didn't go down a tree so after there was a massive backlash he then did a follow-up statement and he's like yeah i don't have autism i'm not on the spectrum so self-diagnosed yes but does he no because he later confirmed for me i think it's more along the lines of when you've got that annoying friend who uh says oh yeah i'm a little bit ocd no you're not you can't you you're not <laughs> you know stop stop saying you are you're not and that's this case. Moving sharply on, directors. We always hear about Steven Spielberg being dyslexic, but are there any others? So which of these rumoured autistic directors have been diagnosed with autism? Do we have the quirky and eccentric and slightly problematic Woody Allen? Do we have Dan Harmon, who, if you do not know, is an amazing animator, does things like Rick and Morty, Community, or Tim Burton, who does your very quirky, a little bit gothic movies, or Stanley Kubrick, the legend who did 2001 A Space Odyssey, The Shining, A Clockwork Orange. So all of these, at one time or another, have been proposed as being neurodivergent. And if you go on different websites, if you just Google neurodiverse celebrities, a lot of these will pop up. However, a lot of them aren't. So the correct answer is Dan Harmon. And he is the only one who is diagnosed. Now, Tim Burton is an interesting one. I know his wife is, and I couldn't find as much proof of a direct quote. 
April says, as I said in a previous webinar, Stanley Kubrick was diagnosed with autism retrospectively. Yeah, you're completely right. And that does bring up further issues. Can you really diagnose someone retrospectively? I'm not sure. But I think because he didn't personally resonate with it, for me, I think you need to personally resonate and be diagnosed if you're using someone as an example. But if you're just an individual navigating the world, to me, having a diagnosis isn't as important. But I do think it's a personal decision. And if any of you have any other thoughts or opinions, I would love to know. So a little bit about Dan. And I know he's the lesser known of all the names, but honestly, he's a comic genius. He's a creator of Community, which is brilliant. And if any of you haven't watched it, I recommend watching it. Not the later seasons. And Rick and Morty. He discovered he may have Asperger's syndrome while writing for Abed on Community. Now, Abed is a character who wasn't explicitly said to be autistic, but he has every characteristic you could possibly imagine that kind of relates to it. It's someone who knows every pop culture reference, who is able to escape in alternative realms and universes, sometimes misses social cues. But what I like about Abed, if you've not watched it, is he's a very well-rounded character. Yes, there's some things he struggles in, but there's also other areas he doesn't. And it was during this process of writing for Community that Dan kind of self-diagnosed. So he isn't officially, you know, there, I don't think he ever went and got a diagnosis or any proof. But considering he did a lot of research behind it, he connected with it. And I think the way that he worded it is OK in my books, whereas Seinfeld probably didn't word it in the best way. And that's why there were most likely a larger backlash. Also that he was a lot more popular. But how do you feel about self-diagnosis? I'd love to know what is your thoughts are you okay with it more the merrier is it okay in certain scenarios or is it a dead no you know if you aren't if you can't prove it don't say it so any thoughts on self-diagnosis maybe some of you are and i'd be curious to know whether you feel it makes a difference whether someone is a household celebrity name or if it's coming from there themselves or if someone else is self-diagnosing them i think a professional diagnosis is better I can't argue with that is better. I'm I'm always a bit apprehensive to completely say it's mandatory just because some people aren't able to. Like it's proven that women and those who are from a minority background in the UK are less likely to be diagnosed due to social economic factors and stigma. Anya says self-diagnosis is a very helpful when you can do research and find tools to make your life easier. And I, I think that's true as well, because, again, like maybe you have characteristics of ASD autism and you don't really want a diagnosis or to go to that level of effort or you can't afford it. But just knowing that you have a lot of the characteristics means that you can apply a lot of the help and strategies to yourself. So that could be really beneficial. This little uh, gif here, which I think uh, really sums it up for me, so I've been browsing WebMD. Uh, it turns out I have everything. And it is true. If you do all the tests about do I have this? Do I have that? The likelihood is you will come out as everything. And the reason why is for a lot of these conditions, you have to apply it that have you had these characteristics for a prolonged period of time? So have you had it for like six months to 12 months? And how much does it hinder your life? If you just say, oh, are you easily distracted? Most people say yes, though they do not have ADHD. Next comment we got, if you resonate with it and it helps you or others to understand it, support, etc., then it's fine. I don't agree with the phrase, we're all a little bit autistic, though. Yeah, I don't like that either. I mean, spectrum, I guess we are. But the difference is autism for me isn't just about being different you know, or thinking in our own unique way. Autism is about the highs and the lows. It's about struggling with day to day life in its kind of typical format. It does about like communication deficits, but it's also about the strengths that you hold. And to say you're a little bit that or a little bit OCD proper undermines the, the struggles that are attached to these ways of thinking. 
We also says, given that the NHS ignores females and AFABs for decades, I think self-diagnosis is vital. And again, I can't help but agree with that as well. In an ideal world, I think we would prefer official ones, but in the world we live in, it would be wrong of us to completely ignore people who self-diagnose. And also it would mean there'd be so many people who aren't receiving the support they deserve and need. April says that pick is a first world problem meme. So now we're on to musicians. Who has been neurodiversified or not? So if you see that gif, that is an image of Beyonce's sister. So like, is it Celine? Mine's gone blank. Solange. Solange, thank you. Uh, yes, yeah, Solange Knowles. And yeah, she is very accomplished and a good singer in her own right. So uh, I would say check her music out if you haven't. What musicians have an autistic diagnosis? So these are ones that through one time or another, people have said, I'm pretty certain they're on the spectrum, but are they? Do we have Michael Jackson, Gary Newman, Susan Boyle or Beethoven? And I picked these individuals because they have all are on certain lists. I went on countless websites to look at all the lists of neurodiverse people and you Pretty much every celebrity you've ever seen or heard of is on one of those lists. But most of you have got this right. Michael Jackson was very quirky. He was very, you know, extroverted. You know, he, he had all the kind of characteristics that a lot of people associate with your classic eccentric autistic person. However, no evidence. There's no evidence to suggest Michael Jackson was. Gary Newman is diagnosed autistic. And he is a great example. He says that um, he hates kind of socialising and parties and that sort of things. But it, he believes that his autism has allowed him to connect and be more, more authentic. Susan Boyle, if any of you do not know who Susan Boyle is, an absolute powerhouse of a singer. And I'll go into a bit more detail about her soon. And Beethoven, no, there's no proof to suggest Beethoven was. There's lots of things that indicate, but... If you think about how old he was, no, I, uh, you can't really use Beethoven. So those two in the middle are a safe bet. The two on the other side, not really. Though Beethoven is often quoted, retrospectively. Susan Boyle, I don't know. Do, if you're not in the UK, I don't know if you'll know Susan Boyle, though I guess she, she is quite famous now. Susan Boyle was the winner of Britain's Got Talent and was told in 2012 and 13 that she had Asperger's syndrome. So really recent and above average intelligence, which I really like because while she was younger, everyone assumed she has a learning disability and that she was caused by brain damage at birth. And that shows you that she's only what was 47 when she first did Britain's Got Talent, according to this. <laughs> and people assume she was brain damaged. They thought she, you know, was a bit slow, but actually she has above average intelligence. So she is a great example of people having the wrong assumption about you and applying their own diagnosis and assumptions on you. So in this case, her being diagnosed was a really positive thing that helped her have a bit more probably self-confidence in herself, I'd imagine. So Anya says, self-diagnosis helps a lot when you are waiting to be diagnosed, minimum one year in my case. No, completely. Because if you have an idea of what you possibly may have, you might be able to go get the help already. So now we're on to television programmes. Or no, sorry, television personalities. These are people who you see day to day on TV who are confirmed. Now, if any of you are fans of The Chase, Chaser or The Chase, I love the series, by the way, addicted to it. Always think I'd be great on it, but it's probably one of those things. Probably I'd be terrible. Um, I can do it at home. Who has the highest win rate in the chase and is also autistic? So we've got Anne Haggerty, the governess, Mark Lambert, the beast, Jenny Ryan, the vixen, or Sean Wallace, the dark destroyer. Such epic names. On a side note, I did some research on Sean, the Dark Destroyer. A lot of people do not like his name because they think it has racist connotations. However, he self-prescribed that name to himself because he's proud of his, his colour and he sticks to that name. 
And I know that's about race and not about neurodiversity, but I think it's a really interesting point that if you self-diagnose and or kind of self-proclaim, like if you called yourself the autistic wizard or something, would that be offensive if you said it? I don't know. But most of you are correct. The governess is autistic and she doesn't have the highest IQ. The beast actually has the highest IQ, yet she has the highest win rate, which is really interesting. And I, what I love about the chase <laughs> is there's such a diverse range. So we've got Anne, who is autistic, who is statistically the best winner. Then you've got Mark, who is arguably the most intelligent, technically a genius by his IQ. I don't know much about Jenny, but then I got uh, Sean, who is the most, um, he has one of the highest emotional intelligence, a high, like, EQ. Anne has gone on to, like, mention that being autistic probably helps her remember things and, like, helps her get more, like, interested and really, like, dive deep in subjects. There's certain areas that she's an absolute expert in, and if you've seen her on I'm a Celebrity funny and hilarious as well. She was only diagnosed at 45. That's an incredibly late diagnosis and if she had known a bit earlier, who knows. Now we're moving on to scientists, inventors and mathematicians. We're always seeing, you know, your classic white men, but there are other people out there. Bonus points to anyone who knows this powerhouse of an individual. I think in April knows to be honest, but we'll see. Is she an athlete? Oh, sorry, can you say that again? Is she an athlete, like someone from the Olympics? I'm no, sure. no, I know. Oh, who... gosh, no, sorry. Oh, yeah, I'm confusing her with someone else. I know who you're on about, though. No, she is an inventor. She... Yeah, I just saw that part now, so I'm like, okay, that's wrong. <laughs> yeah, she does children TV shows as well as shows about science. And I reckon, who can, anyone else want to take a guess? I say that because my mind's gone blank with the name, but I'll know it when I hear it or see it. Well, she's a rocket scientist anyway, or like a, she's a very, very proclaimed individual. I'll come back to that in a moment. But as well as that... We're always told about these people at the bottom. These are your classic smart people who are always told that are on the spectrum. But are they? And that's something... Oh, so we've got Einstein. Was Einstein neurodivergent? Was Steve Jobs neurodivergent? Elon Musk? Or Julian Assange? And... Oh, April doesn't have a clue on that. Don't worry. Maybe it will come to our minds later. These people are always the poster child of thinking differently. And you cannot deny they're all amazing individuals. But are we using them in the wrong way? You know, is it damaging if we say, oh, you know, Einstein was dyslexic, Einstein was autistic. You know, Einstein had every condition under the sun, according to the Internet. But if he didn't, I don't think we should use him. But interestingly, a lot of you have said Elon. So Elon, yeah. But none of the others are officially diagnosed. Steve Jobs might may be dyslexic, but not diagnosed with autism. Einstein, not diagnosed with autism. Julian Assange, not diagnosed with autism, question mark. So Ro, Ro, Ro said, I only know about Elon because everyone got seriously annoyed on the Facebook group when he came out. Yeah, they really did. First of all, let's have a deep dive on Einstein. So Einstein, you know, our uh, image of smart, he was not diagnosed. What they did is they cut his brain up, they looked at it, and he had, you know, different kind of like white and grey matter. And they're like, you know what, he probably was. They looked at his old diaries as a child and he struggled with speech when he was younger. He definitely had characteristics of autism. But also, those characteristics could be applied to a whole host of other conditions. And Steve Jobs, though often quoted as dyslexic, a lot of people believe he is autistic. 
uh, like Temple Granding, who is a very famous autistic woman who does a lot of work with animals as well as people on the spectrum, um, suggests that they probably would be labelled that if they were alive today and had the diagnosis. But ultimately, that's retrospectively. We cannot know. So in my mind, yes, use Einstein as an example of a very intelligent person who thought different and used that difference to change the world. But do not use him as like your poster for, oh, this person is definitely autistic because, you know, he's not or we'll never know. That's more of the real answer. The next one is Elon. Uh, Elon. And uh, he went on SNL, an American TV show, and he went and essentially came out. It was controversial, though, to say the least, Ashley. I'm actually making history tonight as the first person with Asperger's to host SNL, or at least the first to admit it. So I won't make a lot of eye contact with the cast tonight, but don't worry, I'm pretty good at running human in emulation mode. So he's kind of making light of the fact of being socially awkward, not great with human connections. And though that might be the case, for such a high profiled individual to use that as a platform and not really highlight the positives was problematic. In my books, I think having someone like him who's in our camp is a positive, but I also do get why some people were a bit annoyed by it. But if any of you have any other opinions, again, always interesting to know. The next one is Julian Assange. So he is the founder of WikiLeaks, the website which, you know, splurged a load of American top secrets, you know, you know, with the help of like Edward Snowden and others. And he actually goes on record when people asked him, he said, oh, you know, are you autistic? And he's like, you know, people would enjoy pointing out that I have Asperger's or else I was dangling somewhere on the autistic spectrum. I don't want to spoil anyone's fun. So let's just say I am. All hackers are. And I would argue all men are a little bit autistic. Ooh, there's that word again, a little bit. So what is he actually saying in this statement? Is he saying from this quote that he has autism? Is he yes, 100% he has said that? If you read between the lines, is he like, no, I don't have it? Or is he kind of hinting towards it? At the moment, it's split between no and maybe. This one isn't so sure. My gut is saying no. I would say he's saying he doesn't have it. But it's not necessarily. So again, if we, let's go back to the quote. People like pointing out that he has it because they're looking at him and judging the characteristics they understand to be autism to his personality. And he says, I don't want to spoil anyone's fun, which might suggest that do it if you want to, you know, I don't care. Uh, so that would be me saying he is saying he does not. But he's saying that all hackers are. And if you read between the lines, he's saying that all hackers are able to problem solve, are able to see the world from a different perspective. And ultimately, isn't that just what autism is? So I uh, and when he's I agree with that. I think that's kind of saying autism is great and all hackers have those qualities of what makes autism great. It's the last bit that gets a little bit problematic. I would argue all men are a little bit autistic. That's the bit which I, you know, can't get behind. So I would say it's a no from me. Uh, Julian has not publicly said he has autism. He is merely saying he has some of the positive characteristics associated with it. Now, that is most of that we had today, but I'm sure a lot of you often think, OK, great, I am not diagnosed and I am looking for support. And as I said, as an individual, you know, just going about your life, I think self-diagnosis can be a really powerful thing. And as long as you're careful with your wording, it's absolutely fine. But can you get the same level of support whether you are or aren't? In some instances, no. As a child being diagnosed, there are massive benefits and advantages. Uh, it can, for instance, get you more time at school. It can get you different support. In certain instances with autism, for example, you can and ADHD, you can get certain benefits that can help you live a independent lifestyle. But with others like dyslexia and dyspraxia, as an adult, 
is it going to do much difference? Probably not. But you might want to know just for your own like sanity or well-being. But if for you, if it's like something which is a challenge for you, but whether you get diagnosed or not, it's not going to change the challenge. Then you can still look at the support available. Rue said, I only know that Elon Musk is a... Yeah, sorry, I read that one. And if any of you are in the UK and have resonated today, but do not have proof, you are still able to get help under the UK's Equality Act and the Access to Work Employment Scheme. All you need is to have a job confirmed or have you have an assessment with us. And though exceptional individuals do not diagnose people, what we can do is give you an assessment. And this is as good as a diagnosis in the workplace. And what I mean by as good, you can't say I'm officially am. You can't go to your doctor and say, look, I was diagnosed with dyspraxia. But what you can say is I had an assessment in the workplace and they have acknowledged that a lot of my characteristics and struggles closely aligned to those with dyspraxia. And as a result, I am currently receiving these adjustments, maybe noise cancelling headphones, reading software, different working hours. And sometimes having that done, which you are all eligible for, can definitely help the process if you are later looking to get a diagnosis. It's all about building up a story or that kind of credibility. Well, I had support in school. I had support in the workplace. And that's normally your best bet. Then we help apply for the grant. We do all the paperwork. Not too bad. Then you wait a while for the government to get back to us because we have to send it to them. And if they're happy with the adjustments that we've recommended, they will give the OK for funding. And then we'll use that funding to get you any equipment, training, mentoring, adjustments, which are deemed reasonable, which you should check out our previous webinar on our YouTube channel about what is meant by reasonable. If you are not from the UK, though, you can still get an assessment. Unfortunately, though, there would be a cost attached to it because it would not be subsidised by the government. But if you are unsure, get in contact with us and we can always have a chat or point you in the right direction. April says, I have a book called All Cats Have Asperger's Syndrome, and it says there's a little bit of autism in all of us or a little bit of Asperger's. You know, that's it's con I don't know what a lot of you feel about that. I think. Are we all on the spectrum? Yes, we are. You know, life is about diversity. It's, you know, we're all different. There isn't like a thing in your brain, like a gene, which is like autistic, not autistic. It's not as simple as that. However, when we're, we're talking about support and acknowledgement in society, maybe when it, having it a little bit cut and dry is a bit more useful. But the jury is still out, as they say on that. Now, I want to know any questions from any of you, any statements, any comments. Are there any celebrities that you've often heard of and you're not sure whether or not they are? And I can let you know if I know the answer to. If not, I can get back to you. Or if there's any others that you kind of missed. Now is a good time to get your views and your opinions out. But if you don't have any questions, that's fine also. OK, we've got hands up. Anya, go for it. Hi, I just put at the beginning uh, Barbara Streisand and because I'm also a singer and I was very interested in, in her as a person, as a you know, singer and actress. And um, I watch a lot of interviews and, you know, it's so visible that like she, when she had interview with Oprah, she painted her mic white. Oprah was shocked <laughs> and uh, every, she was, uh, Barbara was dressed in white and she always has to sit in a set in, on one side. And uh, just, it's very, very, not having a knowledge and then listen to someone that some you know others might perceive as a weird person or like oh you know drama queen or someone like that very critical kind of in critical way when having a knowledge it's it's actually it's amazing it's different point of view and I'm speaking as well from my own experience because I've been diagnosed very early as a teenager with ADHD and now I'm waiting for, you know, autistic spectrum diagnosis, but learning about this, it's really helpful because I've been criticized for actually the traits of, you know, being neurodiverse and people gave me feedback that it's something negative. You know, it was really hard to hear, oh, you are a control freak or you plan everything or you are this or perfectionist. 
But actually knowing this is the part of being neurodiverse, it's actually extremely helpful. Oh, yeah, this well. is what I wanted to share. No, f thank you so much. And I don't, if you see someone like a celebrity that you look up to, who does have qualities that relate to you, I don't think there's any harm in saying, you know, I see myself in them. Like, for instance, I uh, I always look at John Lennon as like uh, my role model. And was he diagnosed with dyslexia? I don't think there was any proof, but there's a lot of evidence which suggests he does. And ultimately, it doesn't matter if you see yourself in someone and you see how they've been able to use that difference to overcome challenges as a positive, then, you know, all the power to you for it. Rue said, um, I'm looking at fictional characters for traits of neurodivergent or a character ND folks relate to. Star Trek is full of them. Absolutely. And you should check out our previous webinars on our YouTube channel, which goes into pop culture for all the other like dyslexia, dyspraxia, autism. And uh, there's lots of hidden gems there. Some confirmed, some not confirmed. Uh, April says, very interesting webinar today. You're welcome, April. I had no idea it would determine which celebrities and other well-known people were neurodiverse or not. I think it's good to have a better understanding because let's say you tell someone, oh, you know, I have dyspraxia and someone has no idea what that is. You could try to explain it to them. But if there's an image or a person you can mention that they know about already, it can help with their understanding. I think that is great. And here's our details if you are curious about getting diagnosed, if you want to know more about an assessment, or if you just want someone to chat to about your neurodivergence, here's our details. But I really hope you found this useful today and got a few gems from it and cleared up some common misunderstandings. Oh, can I ask a question? Yeah, go for it. If I, I feel I've got this dyspraxia. Yeah. And I have sort of accepted that, um, and I think it's more or less come on as I've got older, kind of symptoms are more apparent. Uh, but I'm waiting for a diagnosis, and it's very difficult to get one. And I think it's more more of course called lofty because my um, GP, um, I think they're trying to, I think, call me up in a way. They, they, they're not, they're not really, really wanting to help. Do you know any ideas or ways I can? I don't know, it's determined to them that um, I have, I want to diagnose because I think it'll help me in a lot of other strategies and coping. Well, I think that's a good question. I think the best thing you can do is build up a case. So for instance, talk to experts like exceptional individuals, do those kind of like quizzes online, get a workplace needs assessment. It's kind of building up enough evidence that would suggest, because NHS and stuff, they do not want to pay out for this if they think that it's pointless. They only really want to pay for it to confirm what they already like believe, but maybe get in contact with us individually because I think that's quite a, uh, a complex thing to really answer. I can't. I'm not very computer literate, so you have to just email me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No worries. I can do that. Um, Vicky says thanks for the session. Anya, very interesting as always. Thanks. Interesting session. Hope to see you next time. Brilliant. And do check out our YouTube channel. Like and subscribe. Pleasure as always, everyone.